I'm Lizzie. And I'm Izzy. And we need help. Each week we stumble through a new book, method, or concept that brings us one step closer to being our best self. Yes, we make fun of ourselves. And others. But mostly just ourselves. So here's to not taking self-help quite so seriously. Welcome to We Need Help. I'm Lizzie. And I'm Izzy, and today we are discussing The New Rules of Aging Well by Frank Lippman and Danielle Claro, which was an awesome book, I thought. I love this book, and I think everybody should read it. And I wish I would have read it when I was 30. I know. I, I, I wish it was written when I was 30. Yeah, I guess it <laughs> like, wasn't written. Why, why couldn't you have written it, you know, years ago? Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It's so good. I'm... It's, so thankful that you wrote you guys wrote it frank and diane is it jack uh, and diane danielle 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 <laughs> little did it little <laughs> bookie about <laughs> aging gracefully <laughs> we're aging disgracefully <laughs> we're aging very disgracefully both like our parents don't want us disgracefully <laughs> yeah, I love this book. So wait, let, before we get into the book, you had you had a mammogram yesterday, did you not? I had a mammogram, and I'm going to tell you, it was the most fun I've had in a long time, and I need to get out more. What? It was so. Okay. <laughs> it was so fun. Like once. Okay, you got, tell me about it. Like, what was the? Once you get past the idea that like this, like tech has your breast like they're pulling it around you know like and i don't know about you like i well the irish we tend to go into something thinking dark thoughts like i'm dying of <laughs> breast cancer if i'm getting a mammogram for any reason doesn't matter if it's just supposed you're it's time yeah so uh but i'm getting the mammogram and i'm i'm gonna do this like publicly for pellet hormone therapy i'm gonna i'm gonna try that so they're making me get a mammogram. Every time you say pellets, I just keep I keep thinking rabbit. Like <laughs> the rabbit feed is pellets. Like or what? Well, I've always I've therapy, always thought of myself as a bit of a rabbit. Okay, yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> a rabbit's ta- obsessed with carrots. I love carrots. I love greens. I love like people chasing me out of gardens. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> pellet pellet therapy is like a little rice sized pellet that they inject into your hip, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I said I was gonna get it, and I was like gonna keep it to myself because like we're not allowed to age like at all in this country no. or the world. I don't know where that began, but I'm now I'm like fuck it, it's gonna be cool because I want to like talk about it and how. I'm like, it will. Do you think it's going to make me a full on better person? No. No. It's not going to change my moral structure. I don't think so. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Unless they, like, I don't know, somehow inject it in your mouth so it'll shut. (laughs) Shut your mouth. (laughs) Um, So. So it's and this, is it individually crafted pellets or yeah. are they yeah okay. you, you get your own pellet and you have to do it every three months it's like five hundred dollars wow yeah and I guess it just makes you so much nicer of a person you sleep better it helps your bone density uh, so this is gonna be something I'm gonna be talking about for a while so hunker down and put your seatbelt on <laughs> okay I'm just I just want to see if it works if it works I'm on board with the pellets so you're yeah you're we're the all guinea doing pig. it oh okay. sweet and now I'm a guinea pig first I was a rabbit now I'm a <laughs> guinea pig things are can going I, great <laughs> I do have one rabbit story can I share the rabbit story uh, by all means if you ever have a rabbit story please share it at all times so the first rehab I went to. <laughs> Why does it um, always start that way? Because <laughs> that's my whole life. Just in and out of rehab. <laughs> this one time at detox. <laughs> I stuck a flute up my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and this one time at rehab. <laughs> so this rehab was like a mixed bag. It was in Barrington, which is mm. kind of fancy. You know, Barrington. Oh, all, yeah, Barrington. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was on like the border of Barrington and like 
the look bad for the Palatine <laughs> or like something was just like the the bad like just on the other side of the tracks is like the you know Elk the Grove lower Village. community yeah <laughs> <laughs> Off 53. No offense to Elk Grove Village people in Chicago. It was people whose address was Route 53. <laughs> this is all so, Chicago humor. Nobody in nobody in Yeah, everyone's like, it. what's route? Yeah. Yep. But um, so we're sitting there and there's like circle time and people have to share like, because it was a, a rehab that was like Monday through Friday and then the weekends you can go home. This sounds like my and, kind of rehab. <laughs> <laughs> you can go home and drink. Rehab in <laughs> Monday through Friday. Rehab Monday through Friday. Or... What a way to make a... Oh, God, we're just... What a start. way to be an addict. <laughs> to lose your mind. I think that's called what everyday Americans do, isn't it? It's the opposite, though. Five yeah. days a week, they've got their shit together. Oh, no, it's the same. Five days a week. They're in they, yeah. pretend rehab. We call it corporate work. Yeah. <laughs> and then they drink their faces off for two days. And then they come back and detox for five days. And then they. Yeah, that yeah. It was very similar, very similar deal. And we were sitting around. There's like a circle time. And then you talk about like what went on over the weekend. And, you know, people are just talking. And there's this one girl from Wakanda or we're out 53s. Like, <laughs> I had a resentment. Mundelein. <laughs> Mundelein. She's like, I, I, had a, I have a resentment because my, uh, my boyfriend threw a grill at me and it was still lit. And we're all like, uh, yeah, that sounds like a justified resentment. And then the Barrington lady, she's just sitting there very proper. And she's like, you know, I can relate. I have a resentment too. Because the rabbits in my garden keep eating all my fucking basil. <laughs> okay. And, I get her. I was, yeah, I was like, I'm right there with you. Like, fucking, this lady's, like, boyfriend threw a lit grill at her. And this lady's rabbits are eating all her fucking basil. But it's all the same. You know, resentment to resentment to resentment. Pain. Pain, pain is, is pain. pain. <laughs> okay, I don't so know how this therapist could keep a straight face because, like, this is what I love about not having a therapist. Like my friends and my mentors will tell me to my face, like you need to shut the fuck up, you know. But this therapist, like, yes, pain mm. is pain, and you you have a right to your feelings. And I was like, ugh. Bitch, okay. okay, so let me tell you a, a couple of things. One, that grill lady. That's yeah. how I feel on Earth at all times. <laughs> Like you want to throw grills? No, I feel like I'm the one that had the hot grill thrown at me and everybody else's basil's getting eaten. Well, not everybody else. Yeah. There's people who've had shittier lives, but like, it's like, okay, yeah. quit bitching at your base about your basil lady. That's how I feel on the inside at all times. One. And two, when I was a little kid about mm, 10, Scarlet's age, we were at my dad's for the weekend. And my dad was like, it was Easter weekend, so he had to bring us home on Sunday. And so we're driving down from Wisconsin to central Illinois, which is where I grew up, allegedly. And <laughs> my dad starts like eerily talking about the circle of life, like how there's beginnings, there's endings, and you know, it's just the way it is. And I'm looking at him, I'm side eyeing. Okay, so little did I know, Easter sun Sunday morning, Easter mo morning, a dog had attacked my sister Katie's rabbit, Bugsy, and oh. eaten it and left tufts of rabbit hair all over the neighborhood. Mm. We got home Easter Sunday and my sister's rabbit, Bugsy, had died. And all you it heard bellowing out of our houses. Bugsy! <laughs> Bugsy was crucified on Easter. Bugsy! Yeah, Bugsy never oh. came back, if you know what I'm saying. No second coming of Bugsy. No pet, no pet cemetery for Bugsy. <laughs> Bugsy did not come back, y'all. Oh, oh, all right. Mm -hmm. So that's, <sighs> yeah, that's my rabbit story. 
Mm. That was a good one. Okay. I tell it all yeah. the time. I tell that story all yeah. the time. You should, As you can tell, you I'm should. pretty good at telling it. Like, yeah, you have it down. All the I, you know the pause before you I enter nailed, the house and yeah, I nailed <laughs> and then that. The wailing of your sister. That was really good. Thank you. I've been practicing yeah. that since we. I was ten years old. I've been ripping on her for like some pretty bad trauma. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. oh, okay. So my mammogram, my mammogram, my, oh God. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mammogram. It was so fun. The lady was so nice. Okay. What's, don't, don't they put your boob into a machine and smash it? It's not that bad though. I mean, it was like kind of okay. like, I think they've improved on these machines a little bit, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, it wasn't that bad. I mean, when somebody's like pulling on your tit. I mean, I haven't had that much action in a long time, so it was interesting. You're like, when can I schedule the next mammogram? <laughs> so would you like to see me again? <laughs> <laughs> you sure I don't have a lump? <laughs> mm, don't I? Don't I? There aren't these just two lumps, really, when we think about it. Yeah, it's all lumps. <laughs> like A whole lot of lump. But yeah, I had a I had a great time. Got a whole lot of lump. <laughs> Got a whole lot of lump. <laughs> I'm just one big lump. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't have a mammogram. There's a there's a war going on here. Okay, so let's no mammograms. I'm, I had my but I no. had a freak out to Jason. I said, uh, "Is this right there?" And he's like. He had to look up where Poland was. <laughs> Love America. God bless America. <laughs> I'm like, you do. I mean, of course, now I know everything about Poland. So I like looked at him like he was like the biggest asshole. Like you are so stupid. How stupid can you be? <laughs> you Hello? don't even know geography. <laughs> oh, my God. You don't know where Poland is? Yeah, it's right next to the Ukraine. Duh. Duh. Yeah, so uh, there are like our, our neighbors and we have a lot of Ukrainians in, in Warsaw. So we're quite upset and I'm mad to tell you the truth. I'm just sick of these leaders of these countries. What the fuck? They should be like spiritually, you know, spiritual and they should be all about love and peace and harmony but they're all about like fucking power and control and it's just really it makes me sick yeah it really makes me sick it's disgusting and, you know and machek i was talking to machek about it and he i'm like why doesn't putin just fucking let let the like okay let them do that and he goes because he's gonna you know he's gonna lose face you know he's gonna he's he people can't think he's weak and he goes imagine if texas decided to leave the united states and join mexico didn't like, they do that? The, they did that. Like, they tried to do that. <laughs> they tried. Well, they're trying. But <laughs> like, you know, the, the Biden or what, whoever the president was would never allow that because it was just like the U.S. would be losing power. So and it I just hate, pisses me off that I, it has to be about power. I hate to get like political about it, but I'm pretty sure Biden would be like, uh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Mm, all right. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, like Texas is Republican. So he's like, oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, um, I, yeah, I, I'm just, it's, it's senseless, it's useless, and it just makes me think these are just big fucking boys with, with small tiny dicks. tiny penises, yeah, that's, this is a penis you know, problem. Ma <clears throat> yeah, making these egotistical, power-hungry decisions that, uh, it just, it makes me, it really makes me sick, so I really have to, like, I'm, I, I will say I'm very scared. <laughs> the higher power and just. I'm very yeah. scared. I'm scared for everybody. I, you know, I cannot stand war. I just don't get it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't lie within me. Yeah. I and mean, we're talking about somebody who has yeah. literally been stomped upon. So I don't like upset people. <laughs> like, like, I just, yeah. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It's not for me. It's just, I'm sorry that they're going through it. And I really hope that we all protect them the way, whatever way we have to, mm -hmm. you know, I really yeah. do. That's where I'm at. And I know a lot of people, I don't really get borders. 
I don't get, I'm like, we're all a human race. Like, God, I, I, I think women should run the world only because they've pushed the, those babies out of them. And it's like, that's somebody's baby. Yeah. There's a lot of, yeah, exactly. It's just so <clears throat> kooky. It's so weird. I'm not, I'm, I'm scared and I want you to come here. Okay. Okay. Think about that. We'll try. Think about that. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Should we get back to our book? Yeah. I'm sad though. It makes me like, this is just making me so sad. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the worst thing is the powerlessness. Like it's decisions of these men. Yeah. You know, they're just making these decisions and there's nothing. You can't do anything to stop a rocket from hitting a town. What can you do? You know, and that's I think that's the scariest part. Like, yeah, you know, it's you have no say. You can't do anything about it. You know, it's like, what can you do? It's 2022. Why are we like using guns and stuff now? Doesn't it seem archaic? It does. Like... Can you just do something online? <laughs> Can't you like just bully them online? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't you just make right? up an Can't Instagram just do, like... page? Yeah, like, right? <laughs> yeah. Like Ukrainians are all, Can't... you know, obese. And just they start smell. Up... They stink. <laughs> yeah. 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 And their yeah, mom is so to, fat. Like, bomb things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That makes no sense. It's like, it's so childish. Like, let's resort to physical violence. It's so, yeah. it's, it's so, so pathetic. Oh my God. Like, why don't you get refined in your, in your, in your revenge? Yeah. Yes, Do you know what I'm seriously. saying? You know what? Go in and just make all, like, shake all their Cokes before you, like, they yeah. open them. <laughs> exactly. Hack into their account so, like, a big picture of Putin's butt comes up every time you log into a computer. Yeah, just make, Something like, like, that. make life help. Like, sing, go into the chapel every time they, like, in their, in, like, put speakers and they put the most annoying song on earth. Or, Ooh. like, adjust, like, the water so, like, in the middle of a shower it always turns cold. Yeah. Like, oh, that's, that's that like... Those are so some refined methods. Yes. Like, I'm going to bomb and kill. I'm going to bomb and kill you because I'm bigger and you're smaller. Fuck you. It's and it's you know ridiculous. what? You know I have a problem with Russia anyway. They have <laughs> shitty food. <laughs> Fix they that have, before you go good, bombing people. They do have good caviar, but I hate caviar. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, that's one single thing yeah yeah so they have bigger problems than ukraine they need I, to... but i i know but i, I don't want to put that I, it's 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 a man and in, in his government i don't want to put that because I, I i know lovely russian people no i didn't and, say it yeah, yeah i know a, a lot of russian people that i like but their food yeah the food's not good yeah Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, we love uh, a lot of Russian people. We really want the U everyone to be okay. Yeah, yeah. So big hugs for everyone, and yeah, we'll see. We'll just see what happens. We'll take it as it comes. Yeah. Um, please come. Please come to me. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's talk about this book, Frank. I love this book so much. So what what is the book? The new it's the new rules of aging well, and it's just a book that gives a lot of really great suggestions, and it's no nonsense. It's there's not all, all these bullshit stories. It's all action items followed with like yeah the why and not a long why either. It's just boom, one sentence. Yeah, it's like one or two sentences of the why. It's all straightforward. There's no foreplay it's, it's and there's no cuddling yeah. after. It's just it boom, is like boom, the boom. perfect. This book is like the perfect sex. It is just like in and ideal, out. <laughs> in and out, but ideal, and you're satisfied, and it's not too much. It gets and the I just job love this done. Book. It, gets it gets the job done. It gets the job done. It is. Uh, this is one of my favorite books we've ever done. This is my favorite self help book that we've done in terms of health. Yes, health book. So yeah. there's no every chapter or every section because there's there's like 
seven sections, they end with just one example. And that's it. He doesn't give examples for every single thing he presents. No. He just gives one at the very end. And he's, like, he's just no nonsense. I love the action. I'd, everybody read this book. My friend MJ read it in one day. She said, this is great. This is yeah. a, like, she is, I, she's like, this is exactly what I needed. It is, and it doesn't expect you to give up everything and doesn't expect you to do a fucking hyperbolic chamber. It doesn't expect you. I mean, it, it does give information on stuff like that, but it doesn't like some of these books. You're like, okay, I don't have time to build a igloo in my, in my house. Like for cryotherapy like you know what i mean like it's yeah. like it's yeah, yeah, unreasonable yeah. so it's, it's a book for everybody like yes. everyone can do this and so we're gonna we're gonna cover it in two parts because there was yeah. just so much good stuff here so we're gonna cover it in two parts and every section of his book he has seven levels so i'm just gonna read them quickly level one is the essentials level two easy ads level three focus on food and that's what we're gonna get to in this episode and then uh, next episode, we're going to do level four, fitness and rest, level five, deeper wellness, level six, everyday habits, and level seven, inner health. Oh, and that's it. It's the best. I'm telling you, go get, the listen to it on Audible because his voice isn't even annoying. That's not his voice. It's a lecture. <laughs> well, I know. I know, but I'm saying yeah. the voice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice, the voice. Yeah, the yeah. voice is not yeah. annoying. And I usually don't like when it's somebody else reading the book. Yeah, but this and was, it was fine. It was perfect. Fine with me. Yeah. And um, Dr. Lippman, he's really, really cool. He, for, so this is what he said about himself. He said, health is more than just the absence of disease. It is a total state of physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and social well-being. So he, he he's one of those holistic doctors where he looks at everything. Okay. Yeah. And, and he I, had a uh, medical, Yeah. You hear that in all of his things. He doesn't just take one side or the other. I love it. Yeah. He um, completed his medical training in South Africa, and then he spent 18 months working in clinics in the bush, which I think is really, really cool. So he became familiar with local traditional healers called Sengomas, which oh. kindled his interest in non-Western healing modalities, which is very, very cool. Yeah. I love doctors. And then in 84. That... Yeah, go ahead. I love doctors that like take the time to look at other avenues of wellness. Absolutely. Just yeah. like not, you know, just they don't have blinders on, you know, yeah. they're, he's, he's kind of looking all over. Um, in 84, he moved to the U.S. He became the chief medical resident at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx. Um, and then this is, I, this is where I like kind of fell in love with him a little bit. He became fascinated by the hospital's addiction clinic, which used acupuncture and Chinese medicine in that clinic. So then he, you know, he just keeps, oh, he's a, he's a seeker. Yeah. I love seekers. Yeah. I I'm love just, it too. I love that. He's so cool. Yeah. Should we like yeah, try to, really, really should we cool. go to his house and see what his garbage looks like? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you recycle? And then he, he, he co-wrote the book with um danielle claro and she wrote um the new rules of pregnancy which i started flipping through and i love them too it's really really cool so um she's got like tips like don't eat the placenta get a labor doula did you have a you didn't have a doula because you had a no. c-section right? i had a well i had emergency c-section when i had jacob so i knew i got to sign up right away for one it's i okay. it was yeah so i didn't have to do labor. I was so excited about that because I was rough the first mm -hmm. time. Yeah. But all my friends had doulas. Yeah. All yeah, my yeah. friends. I had like my ladies and, of the canyon yeah. down in St. Thomas. They all had, they all did it like naturally. And a lot of them like they put placentas, like they, they put them in pill form and, and put them in their, or put them in their smoothies and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't. For wanna... some reason, she says don't eat the percent placenta. So I'm curious why. So yeah. might be a book later on that we can do as well. Well, if you, we should do it in case you get pregnant. Yeah, I, I can't get. get pregnant, I we'll can't be, get. That's pregnant. what we'll do. So you have your tubes tied. Mm hmm. Yes, I do. Jason and I hmm. didn't want children to begin with, and then I changed my mind, and he was like, "Let's do it," and then. 
Uh, I said, but it's really important to me that we only have one. And he's, he felt the same way. So right there on the table, I had my tubes tied. What, um, why did you only want to have one? Uh, I grew up in such a large family and I often felt, uh, forgotten or not important. Mm. I mean, I like. I, if it, if you could see my studio, I look at this, um, uh, this picture of, uh, eye chart because when I was little, they thought I was going to be blind. I was going blind very quickly. And my mom would take me on dates to the eye doctor. I went to specialist after specialist. And I remember it being my only really special time with m only my mom. Oh. So it was like. For me, I really wanted to give all of my attention to one creature and mm -hmm. all of our resources to one creature. And it was like, you know, and it's so funny because when she was three, all of our friends were starting to have their second babies. And she mm -hmm. said, and she said to me, hey, uh, you know how their uh, Kate had a brother and Kylie had a brother. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, I don't want one of those. <laughs> and I was Good. like, why not? And she was like, babies are annoying. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. So uh, she, she still to this day has never asked for a brother or sister. Doesn't want one. Mm. Yeah. So we got lucky. Yeah. Because I know. I don't little... know if I want to want to get pregnant. In that. I kind of want to. I really this adoption has been just following me around. I like really think I want to adopt. Um Okay. It's just been with me, like in my heart, like in my soul, you know. I want you to adopt. Yeah. I'm excited about that if you do. I I just love adoption. I I would I would love for you to adopt. That would be so exciting. I would love for you to be pregnant too, but it does yeah. suck so hard. I don't want you to go through it. I don't know if I want to. Like, I don't know if that's... There's so many kids out there. Like, why? I, and my, my jeans and my, you know, my chick's jeans, like, no thanks. <laughs> like, that's just Russian roulette, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you're so brilliant, and there's so many beautiful things about you. I can't get on board with that. But my check, yeah. You don't want to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, right, Machek. Sorry, Machek. I love you. <laughs> Sorry. We love you. No, we love you. All right. So t um, the first topic, the first part was called the essentials, which basically was like eating less, fasting, gut immunity, cutting out sugar, adding well, like the basics, the essentials, uh, but just presented in a really different way, in a way that has caught and like stuck with me more than any other book. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I loved, I, it reminded me that I'm eating too much. And I love hearing, they say, if you're going to age, as you age, like breakfast is the least important meal of the day. You shouldn't be eating it. I've been telling oh, everybody my, that I for was, years. Me too. I was so excited about this. So very important for our listeners. This is, this is for people who are like 45 and older as you're aging, because it's really important to, to eat more when you're younger and when you're developing. So this yeah. is not a book for 20 year olds. No. Right. This is a book for aging. Right. Because that's dangerous to not, you know, to not eat as much when you're younger. But when you're older, what he said was your body stops growing and stops needing the food for the energy. And just now it's maintaining. You just need to maintain. And it takes energy yeah. to maintain. Yeah, yeah. And it takes energy to process food. Yeah. That's why you need to eat less. Yeah. Which yeah. I totally so he just said, with. bottom line, eat less. I loved it. I was like, he said, eat two meals a day, which I've been doing for years. And everyone's yeah. telling me I was doing it wrong. You guys. Because I, at a certain point, I was like, I don't want to eat more. And I would wake up and Machik and I would get in arguments because he's like, you have to have breakfast. You have to. I never want breakfast. I don't want I'm breakfast. Fine with I don't want your coffee. fucking breakfast, people. Oh, breakfast, breakfast, breakfast. We got to eat breakfast. <laughs> I'm like, these breakfast people. They're obsessed. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. When I when I'm like out with friends or like we're oh. on vacation, I love to go down for breakfast and have some, you know. No, but we're not, I'm not talking an about brunch. Type of person. 
Brunch is completely different. (laughs) Brunch is where my heaven is. If there is a place, (laughs) like you're going to see me, if I get to go to heaven, I'm going to be sitting at brunch with all my friends. Yeah. It's got, it's brunch with God. That's heaven. (laughs) Brunch with God. That's what I want. Like I love, it's both breakfast and lunch. You can have whatever you want. Yeah. And you get a, not quite breakfast, not quite lunch. You get a piece of cantaloupe at the end. It's fantastic. (laughs) Fantastic. So that was cool. Um, Anyway, how are you like with eat? Do you eat a lot? Like, are you, I know food is your favorite. I eat more than anyone else I know. Okay. I mean, I also move a lot more than most people that I know. I also, I do everything more than anybody else I know. Like if I'm doing it, I'm doing a lot of it, but I don't eat. I like, I'm a grazer. I don't like to eat large amounts at one time. I like to eat often. I'm more like, I've got a kind of a newborn's uh, schedule as far as consuming, but um, I like everything in large amounts often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I have been eating even less like amounts and I've been eating less snacks since I've been reading the book and I think I'm skinnier. Yeah. yeah. I just, uh, it's so funny because instinctively I felt this as yeah. I got older, like I just don't need as much food. Mm-hmm. But then there's like this, you know, there's some Polish guilt, like you got to finish everything on your plate. You have to eat three meals a day. You have to have breakfast. You have to eat. You have to eat. You have to eat. And I'm like, I'm just not that hungry. We luckily, uh, when I was growing up, we had a couple of my cousins, they're morbidly obese. Mm. And my mom said that by the time they were three, their mom would put a dinner plate in front of them and they had to finish it to get dessert. Mm. So like, that's the worst thing you can do is make children finish their food. Yeah. So I knew that pretty early. Yeah. But like they, he says to only eat until you feel satisfied, not, not full. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Um, What else does he say? Oh, with exercise, I really like this. He goes, as you get older, it's it's not about the intensity of the exercise. It's just to be constantly moving. Yes, like it could be lighter, but just yeah, just 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 move me. Just get moving. You know, just get up and just get moving. And it doesn't have to be this intense exercise. Like it's not so much about going to the gym, but just get up, take a walk, go do this, you know, clean your house, like just get moving. I'm about to be whiter than I'm I'm about to be whiter than I've ever been before. Are you ready for this? Since reading this book, (laughs) I've been parking way out in the parking lot at Target. (laughs) Oh, girl. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm. yeah that's yeah but they said that's what he was saying he was like you know just don't like put yourself in places to to move i went on a hike you guys i went on a hike wow wow yeah it was not intense but i did go on a hike i've been walking to the beach good yeah, that's 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 what he said. He's like, it's not about this intense exercise. It's just about keep it moving. And then um, he talked about a lot of this is what I took out of this particular chapter. Um, water it. He said, when you're upset, go drink a glass of water. I was like, that is genius. Yeah, that is like, I'm going to do that because I didn't he he says a lot of the things we don't know. We're in bad moods because of dehydration. We don't even know that. So he's like, next time you're in a bad mood, go dr- just water it. Next time you feel like emotions, just go water it. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. Like, I'm, I'm taking that it. on board too. Water it. Yeah. Everybody yeah. just like, I think yeah. that. Um, do you drink mineral water? I drink. Yeah. I mean, all, all water in Poland is like mineral water pretty much. So yeah, I drink mineral water. I add a teaspoon of uh, sea salt, Himalayan sea salt to my wow, water a whole and teaspoon drink half a teaspoon oh, okay i'm like wow yeah. that's what i drink in the mornings yeah yeah that's from aubrey marcus isn't it that was from aubrey marcus but now when i'm like upset or tired 
I didn't think about that. When I was upset or tired, I would go either eat or watch something on Netflix. But now I go and pour myself a glass of water and chug it. I'm going to start that, doing I that. Think is, I didn't I think take that fantastic. out of it. I'm going to I'm going to do that now. Yeah, I'm literally right. like lately, I'm probably just going to be drinking water 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we move on to easy ads, should we take a banta break? Let's take a banta break. We'll be right back. Mm, See you soon. Can't find the button. Thank you all for listening to the We Need Help podcast. We actually need your help. You can become a member of the We Need Help movement. Is that? Can you tell us how? Yeah, absolutely. So there's this really cool service called Patreon where you can support artists, people doing different projects, people like us. Um, you basically go to the www.patreon, that's P A T R E O N dot com slash We Need Help Podcast, and you can subscribe a monthly donation every Stipend. month. Stipend, yeah, for just a dollar a day, (laughs) you would be helping us out greatly. And um, if you become a Patreon, you get access to exclusive content. You get a say in what we do because every month we're going to be picking somebody and they get to pick a book that we're going to review. So you actually have a bit of a say in the art that we produce, which is really cool. And you get to go to heaven. Yes, that's yes. the number one thing. You get to go to heaven. So <laughs> if you don't do it, you're going to hell. But if you do do it, you get eternal life. How awesome is that? It, for just a dollar a day, eternal life. I mean, eternal <laughs> life for a dollar a day. <laughs> so again, we would really appreciate your support. It costs money to do this, by the it way. It costs money. It and does. Time yeah, and we were shocked. We were shocked. We're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but so, I want to I do want to say thank you guys for listening and we would appreciate any support you could give us. Yeah. We we just want to get better and we want to grow and we want you to grow with us. So that's awesome. We have big plans. We got some big plans. So please become a part. Um log on to www.patreon.com slash we need help podcast written together. And Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash we need help podcast. And then you just click on become a Patreon. You can do PayPal, you can do credit card, you can put it up, whatever. We don't care how. Don't just care do how it. Just do it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We love you so Thank much. You. We love you. Welcome back. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, talking about, talking about a revolution. If you're um, still with so, us, we're talking about how we age disgracefully today. <laughs> yeah. Reviewing, uh, Frank Lipton's book, uh, The New Rules of Aging Well, which is a fantastic book. So now we're going to talk about easy ads. So these are just simple things that you can add. These aren't the essentials. These are things, little things that you can add to make your life healthier, um, to make your aging a little better. And... There was just, there was a bunch of them. There was micro bursts of energy. There was a roller. That's what magnesium, I did. Magnesium, I... sauna, mushrooms, sunshine in the morning, have a bedtime ritual, inverted stretching. I loved. So, an inversion. So, we'll talk about those. Yeah. I which, got the foam which roller. Did you from all those. I got, I do most of those you anyway. Did. So, okay. What are they? Because I get Okay. They're, what's the first one? Micro bursts of energy. So just okay. like like speed, Magic does these things called speed contractions. So he's on the treadmill and then suddenly he'll boom for two minutes. He'll just sprint. So it's yeah. just these crazy like where you're out of breath. Yeah. Sprints basically. Yeah. Um, I do that I think in my normal life, but I, I, I'm I bringing more of that to the foam roller. Yeah. I've ordered one immediately. It's amazing. It's truly yeah, when, amazing. Do you remember the reasons he gives for like why the foam roller is important? Yeah. So there's your muscle and then there is like a, it's a, a layer in there. It's called, I can't remember, but, and then your skin. Fascia, I think. Fascia, fascia yeah, right? Yeah, or the fascia. Like and over time it gets very tight. So that's where like yeah. back pain comes from, hip pain comes from sometimes. So they said to, or so he said to get it. And I got to tell you, I foam ro- rolled the hell out of myself. Like I have bruises on my thighs. <laughs> I did it so much. 
Because a little is good, a lot is better. A lot is better. Yeah, Machik has a foam roller. He rolls every day. He has been for years. So that's, I mean, Machik looks great. He does not look 53. Is he 53? I would have never guessed that. And I think, yeah, I think. (laughs) He looks great for 53. um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and because he does a lot of these things. Yeah. You know, he so really do does. So what else? Magnesium. I take magnesium. I sauna, I'm sorry. I fucking hate saunas. I know you're getting a sauna. I just don't like saunas. I'm not a fan. I don't like them. I love saunas. And I'm actually getting uh, the light one. What are they called? They told you to get... Infrared. Uh, infrared light. I'm going to have one put in my gym. I already, like, I've already shopped it out. Or now we're talking about putting one, like right next to the pond so you can look out onto the pond when you're in the sauna i could do that yeah okay well i could maybe do that are you getting the dry heat or the wet wet sauna? dry dry they because i would joe rogan said i wrote watched a big thing on joe well now this is set off this thing where now i'm like obsessing about this infrared uh thing and I loved like my grandma and I used to take a sauna all the time when she would take me to her pool and it was so nice but uh yeah I I love saunas I think they make you feel great okay I maybe maybe I'll get on board one day um mushrooms the dried mushrooms I do that when I had cancer this guy it was so funny I was like in the waiting room waiting to get checked in for my radiotherapy and there was this guy there and he was he had like this weird thing that he was drinking. I'm like, what is that? He goes, it's dried mushroom tea. And I was like, why? And he's like, oh my God, it's, it has all these nutrients. And he sent me, he took down my address and he sent me all this information about Reiki mushrooms. Yeah, they're and, so uh, good for you. Yeah. Lion's mane is another one. Yeah. I, I'm all about mushrooms and I order them. I order them a lot and then I don't take them. Mm, okay. Yeah, try, it's important I'm to, to take be better. It yeah, doesn't it. help if you don't put it in your body, I guess. Yeah, just staring at it. <laughs> I was like, if everything I ordered on Amazon like worked out, I would be the healthiest person on earth. <laughs> <laughs> what else did he have? Oh, sunshine in the morning. We got that from Aubrey Marcus as well, where you just go and get natural light first thing in the morning. Having a bedtime ritual. Do you have a bedtime ritual? Do you have a yes. ritual to... What is it? Yes. Uh, well, if I, I love to shower at night. That's my favorite time. Mm. It, so I'll shower. I have to have shaved legs every day. Like I can't okay. go a day without shaving my legs because I don't like putting my legs together. And I have a stubble. Yeah, I yeah. have to have a, a made bed. That's... Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't crawl into some... F- yeah train from yes yeah yeah I have oh, to have that too yeah uncivilized like I meet people they do not make their bed and I have so much respect for the freaking gall they have you know when I got sober the lady that was helping me get sober gave me a list of things to do and the first thing was make your bed and so I got into that habit no matter what I make my bed in the morning it's so important to make your bed. It's not in this particular book, but I'm going to tell you, if you make your bed, it starts off your day so much better. There's a book. There's a self-help book. Make your bed. So we should get, we should do that at some point. That book. Well, we've already done it. See, it's, we wrote it. <laughs> we wrote it. <laughs> yes, we should. Um, but, what uh, else? Then, he talks then about, I, um, oh, I, yeah. I take my vitamins. Oh, go ahead. You're, you're going on. I take my vitamins. Yeah. No, I, and then I take my supplements. I take my calm. That's what I use for magnesium. And mm-hmm. then I brush my teeth, wash my face. Another thing, if you don't wash your face before you go to bed, you're fucking savage. You're an animal. You're nuts. You're nutty. Mm. 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 You're like right there, like you and then Manson. <laughs> you and then Putin. Yeah. Oh God. No, not that. Not right now. You know what? Putin needs to wash his fucking face. He needs to make his bed. He has people yeah, he do does. it for him. He needs to do it himself. Yeah. Um. Oh, and he talks about inverting, so hanging upside down, or just putting your um 
your head below your heart. So he said it, he said your organs are settled in a certain way. So he said it's great to, from time to time to flip it up and like re, you know, rearrange your organs sort of, you know, hang upside down, hang upside down off the couch. It gets the blood flowing to different parts of your body. So I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. I've had an aerial yoga hammock forever and you do inverts oh. on it and it's amazing. It's amazing. And do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I love, well, I, I de- had it at, definitely at my coming house. over there. <laughs> yeah. It's so good, but I haven't put one up at my new house yet because I'm waiting for the lanai to be built. But, um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's aerial yoga. If for anybody who, uh, like Scarlett will climb in the hammock and just like go in there and just lay, just rock herself in that thing and just chill and read or play her iPad or whatever. And that's just like, and she's like a spider monkey on that thing. She can climb to the top and flip down. It's hilarious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. And yeah, he said, he talks about stretching a lot too, how stretch the opposite of how you sit all day. So if you're sitting hunched over a computer, stretch backwards. Like basically make the opposite shape of what your what body's doing all day. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then fucking C- CBD, I had to skip it because I hate CBD. I hate oh. this whole CBD thing. Did you see that on the notes? Because I hate CBD. No. Oh, I just saw that. Why does it annoy the fuck out of me? <laughs> <laughs> I hate CBD. Fuck you and your CBD. Okay. All right. There's got to be a place because like half my friends are doing it. One of my friends like owns stock in a company or owns like half of a company. I get it, but I don't get it. I've tried it. It does nothing. It does zero. It does absolutely nothing. It's all, (laughs) I I think it's bullshit. I think it's bullshit. So I think this is the only thing in the book that I thought was bullshit. Maybe, you know what? Maybe some people react to it. Some people just don't. Well, I'm going to tell you, like, it helps Jason's carpal tunnel. I bought mm. this $175 CBD oil. And it helped his, like, because, you know, he's working on computers all day long. And it, yeah. his arms just ache. He's like, it helped that. Yeah. I saw nothing, but it's just like, okay, CBD, I get it. All right. Let's uh, fine, you know. Let's move CBD. on. Yeah, fine CBD. with the fucking CBD. All right, I'll just fucking put some CBD on it. But I do know people that it does help. I have a friend who Me has too. depression and anxiety, and she she smokes it in like one of those vapes, and it really it does help her. Like it do really th- does. So yeah, it, I I know a lot of people it helps. It's just like I feel like that with meditation for me. It's like meditation yeah. and CBD. Why? Am I odd man out? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm out. I'm CBD doesn't work for me at all. Okay. And you know what? Probably because I did heroin. So. (laughs) Well, I mean, I. It's hard to compete with that. (laughs) I never did heroin, but like, it's not what me. I don't know. Maybe. uh, Everybody's body's different. Maybe it just, you know, it affects. Some people and some people doesn't. I, I do think, it, think CBD, if if your antidepressants or CBD, take the CBD. Take I'm the natural about, CBD. Yes, take the CBD. Uh, we tried it with my mom for a while. It didn't seem to help. Of course, you know, if you're drinking like a gallon of wine on the side, it just, like, <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's a, it pairs nicely with a gallon of gallo. <laughs> we didn't see any any improvement at all. No. Uh, <laughs> did it calm her down? Yeah. Yeah. Paired with that like gallon of gallo, out. it sure did. <laughs> she passed out. She was, she looked really relaxed. Sleeping like a baby. It does work. A drunk baby. It does work. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm 
changing my mind on CBD now. <laughs> I guess it does work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, the final, his third topic that we're going to talk about today was <laughs> is food. Your favorite topic. My favorite Your reason topic. to stay alive. Yeah. My only reason to live. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love food and I do all that, all of his stuff. What did he suggest? I don't have my notes in front of me because this motherfucking Wi-Fi doesn't ever work right around here. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, uh, well, I'll tell you what he suggests. Okay. Uh, nothing with like the nutritional labels on there. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like everything fresh. Yep. So if it has like this nutritional label on there, you know, kind of stay away from it. But he yeah. just says, like, the freshest foods. And, of course, um, he didn't say farm fresh eggs. He's, he called them, I think, pasture-raised pasture, pasture raised or something like that. Because he said, like, okay. he kind of talked about all the bullshit, all the fake um, organic bullshit stuff that is out there. And he kind of, yeah. like, how to cut through that, how to see through that. That was super interesting to me. I love that. I love that. I And I... I I talk about it all the time. Like I do almost everything uh, he suggested. Um, the one thing I was really happy about is he said eggs are back to being a superfood because they go in and out in favor, like in, in fads mm -hmm. and stuff. But my one of my favorite foods are duck eggs and they're high in fat. They're so good for you if you can get them. Uh, I love quail eggs and I love like, fresh eggs from like a local person it's so yeah, he, much better yeah he said to try to do farmers markets and then another really important thing in this chapter he said you want your energy to come from fat and not carbs because he goes the fat the carb energy it's a quick burst and then the crash is hard yeah fat energy is a very slow and even and yeah. so he said you kind of have to substitute out um, your carbs and put in the, the fats, like the good and, fats. And I've been doing that, like since that, th since all of this, I've been focusing on my fats, which I have a high fat diet anyway. Like I've always done that. I mean, I, I don't know anybody, like anybody who eats as many avocados and olive oil and olives and all of those things that are just so, uh, good, but I've been cutting my, carbs and another thing like in here in america like none of our bread is good period none of our bread so i've been bringing mm. in flour from france for five four years now and it's it really doesn't affect you as badly as the bread here like when i do it but i have been eliminating all breads trying to trying not to eat pizza which is such a good food Mm. Yeah. What, what's your, what's your like sort of poison? What's your, uh, guilty pleasure in terms of food? I love pizza. I love popcorn. Mm. I love, and my number one favorite food on earth is bread and butter. Yeah. Fresh bread, crusty, still warm on the inside, sourdough yeah. with just a slab of butter. But actually he says butter's fine. I Which knew butter was fine. Is, These fucking losers. I knew for butter was years. fine too. I could have told you that when Dr. Oz finally came out, he was like, it helps your digestive tract. I was like, I was sat over there like I was a fucking, uh huh. Mm hmm. All you motherfuckers hated My, butter, and I love butter. Yeah, it I makes, love butter. And if you're going to eat bread, it's better to eat bread with butter than just plain bread. But who eats plain bread? Psycho psychopaths. Can you just who? see somebody eating just plain bread? Like you need to dip, you need to either dip it in very high quality olive oil or slather it with butter. What are you doing if you're just picking up a piece of bread? You better be <laughs> you're pregnant. Insane. You're like Putin. Yeah, you're Putin. <laughs> so what but Jason says that I get a, like a euphoria that comes over me when I go into a French bakery. Like it's Ooh. like a high. I get like a high. Like, yeah, I haven't had heroin, but I've walked into a French bakery. That's it. If you know what I mean? Do you want to know what my brother and I used to do? We used to shoot up and go to a French bakery. <laughs> we, I swear to God. And we used to get croissants and sit in the car. <laughs> oh my, you rich little assholes. <laughs> You rich little... There was a plate. 
It was it was a bakery in Barrington. Do you remember the name of it? It was like La. Oh, well, after I'm birth to that, I'm gonna, we're gonna after birth there. We're okay, after so, birth there. So one time after I had Scarlett, uh, we seeked out this French bakery in Chicago, and we drove for like an hour to get there. And I get in there, and I get like a a loaf of brioche, which is one of my favorite breads, mm. and we have a crepe and then we're coming out and I've got my bread and there's this homeless guy like feed me I'm hungry I'm hungry I'm hungry and I was like I look at Jason I go Jason I mean here I've like traveled for this my favorite bread I go go give him some of my bread then he was like are you sure I was like honey I can't walk by a starving person you know and he was like okay so Jason walks over there and he's like Hey, uh, dude, you want some bread? And he goes, I want no, yeah, I want no bread. And Jason's like, it's brioche. It's really good. And I look at Jason. I go, he's like selling him on the bread. I go, Jason, he doesn't want fucking bread. Like, you tried. Like, <laughs> don't be like selling him on my brioche. But like, he was. But Jason was so so cute. He's like. But it's really, really good bread. It's brioche. And I was like, okay, like you tried, dude. Like he's not starving. Of course he wanted like a fin to go get some, you know, hooch. Of course, yeah. He wants money. Yeah, I'm he's all, thirsty, I'm, not hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about giving homeless people money for alcohol and drugs. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah. Because if I'm homeless, I want to be high. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what else did he say oh he said you know meat is animal like grass-fed um organic meat is is actually fine for you which was such a relief because i'm like and he said liver and like all that stuff is also good for you which i'm so happy about because i hate these food books that are like sorry you have to be vegan have you read yeah. uh have you read the omnivore's dilemma no no uh, okay we that's one we have to do it's by michael pollan he's okay. the guy that uh wrote that mushroom book oh okay it's so amazing and it basically goes into like having good quality meat that's almost like a seasoning some of these you know uh beautiful cultures that live long long periods of time have quality meat just as like a little flavor yeah. like you don't have to eat you know, the 96 ouncer in frickin' Texas, you know, but you yeah. don't have to be a total leaf chewer either. Yeah, and I think, you know, what Machik talked about this, and this was super interesting, because, you know, he's a history buff. So he said meat used to be a treat once a week, but now, especially Americans have gotten into the habit, and it's come over, you know, to Europe as well, that you eat meat almost every day. He goes, it should just be a special occasion where you eat well, it. So I, I like that too. And we're killing our planet because of it. Like our, yeah. the, the gases yeah, yeah. that are being let off by this is like a huge deal. But I'm glad we don't have to give it up all the way because that's impossible. Yeah. I love foie mm. gras. Oh, I will. <laughs> and I know you another, do too. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of our But that's no longer a guilty topic. pleasure because it's, it's healthy. It's good for you. So. <laughs> I don't know if he said that, but I'm down with it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let them eat. He did say off. that. He said, he said liver. He said, um, what is it? What's it in the bones? Marrow. He said, that's all good. So. Oh, I know it's good. Bone broth is so huge. He talked a lot about bone broth. Mm. He talked a lot about digestive health, health, which is a uh, huge huge deal to me you know that like yeah my microbiome yeah. is manicured i know you you really care about your gut health i care so much Good. about my gut health all right i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> i'm <on>. obsessed <laughs> bless you thank you i i i'm not i'm a i'm a loud sneezer oh me too me too let it out yeah let it out. I, like people just say Jesus. <laughs> All right. So we'll finish up the rest of the book next week. But that was really yep. good. What are you taking from this half of the book? Anything like so far that you're just like taking with you? 
The foam roller is huge. Uh, that's yeah. something I'm doing every day, day that's different. Um, and then I'm eating less. Yeah. That's, I mean, and I'm parking far away. Like, there, this, these are all things I can do. Mushrooms. Yeah. I'm going to take those vitamins instead of just leave them on the countertop. <laughs> okay. What are, what are you taking? What are you taking? Intermittent fasting, which I don't know if we covered it here, but um, he said to not eat for like 16 hours. And then for the rest of the hours, that's when you eat. So the intermittent fasting. So I just wake up and I don't eat the breakfast. It's perfect. Perfect. And Which then I didn't say, ever want anyway. And then you say to Machak, <laughs> and I don't have to. Drinking, drinking the water when I'm upset. So that's, that's, I love that. Just whenever I'm feeling a certain kind of way, tired, upset, angry, I'm going to drink some water. I want to do that too. That is like, I didn't even pick that up for some reason. And now I'm, I'm taking that with me too. That's cool. such a great Yay. idea. Thank you for, for picking that up. I didn't, I, I still don't remember the part that he said that in. So that's yeah. awesome. Okay. Right. Well, we will see you next Tuesday. See I absolutely Tuesday. freaking adore you. Love you. And I hope this Ukraine thing uh, comes to a peaceful place soon. Yeah, me too. Let's pray for that. I mean, yep, let's whatever. set that, let, whatever Send you that do, intention. Yeah. that is happening. Let's, let's picture that and let's, um, but if not, we'll be recording in the studio together. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're coming here. All right. I love Man. you. <laughs> love you too. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Rate and follow us if you like us. If you don't, please don't. And come visit us at www dot the we need help podcast.com there you can find show notes links for books you can join audible which is you know how we actually read our books <laughs> we listen to them and we have special exclusive content just for you also feel free to subscribe to our patreon account that's where you can support us financially because we need it and it can be anywhere from a dollar to 100 billion dollars <laughs> a month you know whatever you can afford <laughs> And uh, the link to our Patreon account is www.patreon, and that's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash We Need Help Podcast. And you can support um, you can support us on there. We would really appreciate it because we do need help. Awesome! And we will see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Thanks, Bye. loves. Bye.